Lilu is considered as the most promising heir to Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. He has managed to rack in 20% per year returns for the past 30 plus years and this makes him one of the all-time greats in the investing world. Stay tuned until the end of this video as I'll analyze every single one of his stock investments with my 5-step fundamental analysis model. As always, always set with educational purposes and is not meant to be taken as financial advice. It is important to note that Li Lu invests not only in the US, but in the regulatory 13F filing reports only his US investments are needed to be disclosed, so we do not have the full information in which other stocks he is invested in and at what percentages. All in all, Li Lu has only 5 stocks in his total portfolio, at spot number 5 comes Apple with a 6% portfolio share out of the 1.7 billion total portfolio size. Apple is a major holding not only for Lilu but also for Berkshire Hathaway, the company of Warren Buffett. Buffett has 40% of his $300 billion portfolio allocation in Apple. Let's now analyze Apple with my 5-step model. First, I look at the debt management. The current ratio is 0.88, it needs to be above 1 in order to be considered good. The debt to equity ratio is 2.37, it needs to be below 1 and it is optimal to be below 0.5. So from a debt management perspective, I definitely do not like Apple's positioning. The PE ratio for Apple is 23.2, which is well above the 2016 levels of around 10. For a large company like Apple, I would optimally pay no more than 16 price to earnings. The return on equity ratio is 150%, which from first glance looks incredible, but if you look under the hood as they say, this is all due to very low equity levels due to very high liabilities. Hence, the price to book ratio for Apple is 44.75 and it is optimal to be below 3 for a manufacturing business like Apple. I would not invest in Apple at current valuations as I place them as a 1 out of 5 on this scale. On spot number 4 comes Berkshire Hathaway, the company of Warren Buffett. It has a 13.75% portfolio share. This does not surprise me as a lot of great investors have huge allocations in the company. Watch my portfolio analysis video about Guy Spear, Bill Gates here on the channel to see. The company is a conglomerate that owns multiple businesses and it has a huge portfolio of investments. It needs to be treated with a special analysis video and comment down below if you want to see such a video. On spot number 3 comes Google stock, it has a massive 22% portfolio share. Google has an incredible moat we'll see in the coming decade if AI will manage to disrupt the business. But people must not forget Google is a pioneer in the AI technology as well. The debt management of Google is incredible, their short term debt health is impeccable with a current ratio of 2.52 while their debt to equity ratio is at the optimal level of below 0.5 sitting at about 0.11. The return on equity is 21.86% which is very good and above the desired 12% return. The price to book is 5 which for such a business is not that high as Google is a software company and does not need very much physical facilities and assets. The price to earnings for Google is 19.4 which is not too high, optimally I would like it at about 17 which historically for Google is quite cheap but even at current levels I would not say the company is very much overvalued. I give Google a 5 out of 5 on these criteria and I really like the company's fundamentals. On spot number 2 is Bank of America, this is another heavily beloved company 
for all Buffett and Munger style value investors. Guy Spear, Li Lu, Munger and Buffett all have very big allocations in the company, with Li Lu's one being 25.27% of his total portfolio. Bank of America is the second biggest bank in the US and it's a staple in the financial sector. The current PE is 11, which is quite good, but we must not forget that the banking sector's earnings are very volatile and one year could be very different from the following one. The price to book ratio for BAC stock is 1.15, which on first glance is good. This means the equity of the company is close to its market cap. Hence, the risk is lowered. But most of the time, when it comes to a bank, we want to buy it below 1. Bank of America has a long history of the PB trading and staying below 1 for a substantial amount of time, which shows a current risk to the stock. The efficiency of the company is good with a ROE of 11.2%, the debt to equity ratio is 1.13, which is above 1 and it is not ideal with the current ratio being 1.92, again it is not that good, as it is below 1. I personally, unlike these greats of the investing world, see much risks and much bigger opportunities from a risk-reward perspective than Bank of America, and I would not invest in it. The top stock of Lilu is Micron with a 33% portfolio share. I really like Micron as well and I am not alone in this camp. Monish Pabrai, another renowned value investor, has a huge percentage of his portfolio in Micron. It is a leading chip manufacturing company with incredible fundamentals. It has a current PE of 11.17 as it went up by 25% over the course of January. The PB ratio is 1.37, for a while it was trading at 1.1, which is quite low for such a business and the current mode it has. Micron has a 12.6% ROE and it covers this basic efficiency criteria. While from a debt perspective, the DE ratio is 0.2, which is incredible, and the current ratio is 3.5, which again is beyond okay. All in all, Micron scores a 5 out of 5 and I very much like the stock. As a final important conclusion, Lilu's portfolio consists of 39% financials, 39% hardware technology and 22% software technology investments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment down below which other investors or stocks you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again very soon.